Conquer Destiny, Rise of Iron, and get the Iron Gjallarhorn. It's Thursday, September 15th. I'm Rob with the Daily News. This week's beginning to close, but the news is flooding. So let's open up those gates and take a look. If you were one of the three million people who played the Resident Evil 7 demo, congrats, you just broke a new record. The Resident Evil 7 demo called Beginning Hour is the most downloaded single player PS4 demo. The demo was released last June, and even though it's said to be a prologue, it features a different protagonist and will not be in the full Resident Evil 7 game. And if you were a fan of the demo, good news! A new version of the demo called Twilight is out now. The demo allows players to explore more of the mysterious derelict mansion. Even more good news, the demo does not require a PS Plus membership. Score! And in other pre-release video game record breakers, the Battlefield 1 beta just made one of its own. EA Games announced today that its Battlefield 1 beta, which ended last week, pulled in over 13 million players, setting the mark as the biggest beta in the history of Electronic Arts. The previous title holder went to Star Wars Battlefront beta, which had more than 9 million players. EA also released an infographic that pertained to the beta achievements. For example, 62.2 million horseback kills, 13.8 million people got run over by cars, and additionally, the most popular class was Assault, which pulled in 30% of players, followed by the Scout at 28%. Senior producer Alex Grondel thanked fans and said the team at DICE is pouring over all the data and will tune the game accordingly. For example, the light tank performed a little too well, he said, suggesting a nerf is incoming. I can agree with that. It was fun while it lasted. Mm. The Bioshock collection is out this week, making it a great time to relive the series. But it also brings up the question, why can't we have more? Rolling Stone's Glixel today published an in-depth interview with the Bioshock designer, Ken Levine, in which he explains exactly why he stopped making Bioshock games. Regarding Bioshock Infinite, Levine said, It changed my life in terms of what it did to my health, and what it did to my view of making games, and my relationships with people. Levine said he is a creative type who would rather write stories than manage people in particular. After making Bioshock Infinite, Levine and a small team left Irrational Games, and are currently working on a small-scale open-world game. It's been an unfortunate trend lately for video games getting delayed, and it seems like South Park The Fractured Butt Hole will do the same. The game was originally slotted to come out this December, but now it's set to release in Q1 of early 2017, meaning sometime between January and March. Ubisoft stated in a blog post, the development team wants to make sure the game experience meets the high expectations of fans, and the additional time will help them achieve this goal. It's an unfortunate delay, but you can admire their choice to finesse the game, rather than follow suit of the South Park show's creators and rush to meet their deadline. Well, that's all the news I got for you today, as well as the week. Mike Mahardy takes over tomorrow, and then next week, Jess takes back the reins. Thanks for watching, and have a happy Thursday.